I've set aside three items that I've not listed. We're gonna go to the computer. I'm gonna show you live how I research actives and solds to figure out what to price my stuff at and share with you a bit of my philosophy along the way because I am Socrates. Let's start with this. This is a Viore t-shirt. This is one of the best ever men's clothing brands or just clothing brands period to resell. The demand is insane. If I can get it in focus, Viore, V-U-O-R-I. This was a gift from a friend. It's a size medium and I've not looked at the comps. I don't know what this is currently going for. Let's do Viore t-shirt medium. Doesn't even have to be in the men's category for this one because t-shirts are fairly unisex. I'm gonna go down and click the used box because new tags and used categories will have different sales velocities, meaning sell-through rates for each brand. Typically new with tags, higher sell-through, although that's not always the case. Currently there are 37 active listings for your t-shirt. And let's even narrow it down more. Do buy it now. So 34, go over to solds, 112. That is a ridiculous sell through and that's about what I anticipated. This is a very, very, very popular brand. In a circumstance like this, where the demand is through the roof, you have a lot more leeway to price up I am again only speaking from my own experience, my own philosophy. These are not dicta from on high. I'm not saying this is how you must price anything. This is simply my own personal process. So uh, when something is this in demand, you can price at basically whatever you think the market will support that you can plausibly flip it for. And like if I price this t-shirt, <clears throat> excuse me, at 40 bucks, there is a very good chance that someone, well, not a very good chance, there is a chance that someone will pay me full asking price, 40 bucks. More likely, I would probably get a ton of lowball offers and end up flipping it for 30 after a few weeks. That would be my guess. There is a chance someone could snap it up like that. You're going to have a lot of eyeballs on this listing. There's a bunch flipping for 35. This is how people typically price clothing, regardless of sell through, in my experience, is they just look at the solds, they see how much they think they can get away with getting, and they price it there. And I think there are lots of reasons to not do that for everything. Something like this, have at it. So this one, I might uh, I might price it like 35 and just take a, a, an offer or haggle a little bit, let it go at 30. Even though maybe I could get away with 40, my gut check tells me that really this is worth like 30. So 30 bucks. Pricing it at 35, that's, I think, what I will price it at, 35. Next item is this pair of shorts. This is from a brand called OP, Ocean Pacific. This is a pair of board shorts, it's OP Flex. I picked these up for $2. I didn't look at the sell-through before I got them. I just knew board shorts, summer's coming up, they were two bucks, relatively low risk. And I have flipped OP before. It's not that great of a brand, so this is, gonna be a mystery to me. I'll be finding out if I made a mistake live. OP flex shorts men 32. And the size is important because different sizes will have different sales velocities. Typically the higher the size, the bigger the size, the more in demand it will be. Currently nine sold listings, which is not that promising, I must say and the sold price is around 15, which is what I anticipated, 48 actives. This is what a lot of my clothing listings look like in terms of the demand now. Because I have been sourcing outside of the retail thrift environments, I get stuff that has a market, but it's a relatively much weaker market, certainly than something like the Viore shirt. But I will still be able to make money on this because when you go to the actives and you sort lowest to highest, you can see that the bottom of the market is hovering around 14, 15 bucks. I can turn this first class item that I sourced for two bucks into a little bit of profit 
flipping it at 15. That's not an exercise that everybody is willing to run and your tolerance for the amount of work that it takes to realize a return on these lower dollar items may be different than mine. Mine is fairly high because I know that I get a lot of this stuff for really cheap and I can flip a lot of them. I can list and flip a lot of them over the long haul and at that point it becomes worth it. I'm happy to list this at let's say like 18 and pocket maybe like eight bucks profit. I'm good with that, even if it takes a little bit longer. And that's, I think, what I would price this at, probably $17.99 with free shipping. The shipping issue is contentious. I do free shipping, mostly just because it's what I've always done. There are pretty entrenched camps on both sides, but the prevailing wind seems to be towards paid shipping. That's a decision for you to make. I am not super passionate either way. I may eventually revise that. So whether you're doing free shipping or you're doing a base price with a flat rate of shipping added on top, it should calculate out to be around what the bottom of the market will support or slightly like two bucks higher. So if there were a bunch in here for 15, I would probably price it around 17, which leaves a little bit of wiggle room for negotiation for dealing with low ballers. And I'm pretty aggressive with low ballers. I've made a video about it in the past. If they lowball me too many consecutive times, I will just block them. My block list is fat. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll budge like 50 cents a dollar and get them down to where the real bottom of the market is over time. So this, even though the sell-through is relatively low, if I price this cheap, even if I don't promote it, there is a good chance that it will turn into a quick flip because that's pretty much the cheapest anybody can buy this item anywhere on the internet. If you don't have your sea legs when it comes to pricing to just having a kind of a, a knee-jerk feel for, for what to price at or what you're gonna make, I really recommend that you use something like this. This is the one that I kind of play around with from time to time, the eBay fee calculator. So let's say that I did flip these for 18, full asking price, zero shipping charged, um, Got this for two. Let's say first class shipping was on the higher end. Let's say like worst case scenario, it's six and a half. That's the highest, or it was like 628. That's the highest that I've recently paid for first class shipping. Uh, it's not gonna be that. It's gonna be more like probably four and a half or maybe even less, maybe like four. Um, let's, I have a basic store, top rated, managed payments. Zero promoted, zero blah, 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 blah. Um, sales tax. Let's say 7% sales tax, which is what it is in California. I think that varies based on buyer location, I could be wrong. Okay, so total profit, 734. Then you have to factor in your federal taxes, which will vary based on who you are. But, you know, I can still spend two bucks and make seven bucks, 34 cents pre-tax. It's pretty good. Let's say I got this for even cheaper. Let's say I got this for 50 cents, which is more realistic for what I would normally pay for it. And let's say shipping was like four and a half for first class, 10 bucks. So I'm happy to sell it at 18, turning two bucks into 10 bucks, 62 cents. Or let's say I got, uh, I dealt with low ballers. I flipped it at 15 and I did spend what I spent on it, two bucks, 647. I'm still happy to go through the process of throwing this into my listing process because I, it's streamlined at this point. That's what I do, I list clothing. So I'm gonna be photographing and listing clothing anyway. This is just a uh, you know, seven, $8 bill, depending on those thresholds, just sitting, waiting to be redeemed in my mind. And it may take longer than the Viore shirt to sell, but I'm still happy to do that. So, um, you know, that that number is gonna move around a little bit based on kind of circumstances as they change. Or let's say I'm not happy with 647. Let's say I have some arbitrary rule, or not arbitrary, let's say just I have decided that I must net a minimum of $15 on everything that I sell regardless, which I think is not a smart way to do business, especially with clothing, but let's say that is the case. So you can come in and kind of fool around with this. Okay, so I'd have to price it at 25 bucks. If I got it at two, I would have to sell it at 25 
if this shipping fee is correct to make 15. And I, I don't source with this level of precision. At this point, I do run an instinct because I've sold so much. I know that I can net like a rough ballpark figure on a certain item. I would much rather just sell this at 15, make the seven bucks or whatever, and just move on with my life instead of having this clog up my inventory for months and months. Last item, this is something I got for free from my neighbors. It's an Old Navy XL Tall pea coat. It's a women's, it's out of season. But let's see what the market is doing. Right now, there is not that many actives for XL Talls. I had searched for XL Tall Black and got nothing active. I'm gonna broaden this search a little bit and just do XL. So just for XLs, not XL Talls. It's 112 actives, 15 solds. So if I was just focused in on the more narrow search of the XL Tall, it tells a different story than if I just search for P codes generally. And sometimes that's good to do. It's, it's good to get more of an aerial view of something, get a little bit out of the weeds of the item specifics and get a take the temperature of the market at large. So the Peacoat market is fairly anemic right now, which is to be expected. They're out of seasons. They're not a really that highly demand ed item. And anyway, when it's in season, Old Navy is not super high quality stuff. In this case, because I got it for free, I will price it dramatically lower. I would probably price this at like, yeah, 25. I would price this at 25 and then I'm gonna ship it pirate ship. Pirate Ship is a third party service that's free to use that allows you to ship using the priority cubic rate. If you can fit these clothing items into the Tyvek envelopes that are free from USPS, um, you can get relatively cheap priority shipping. Sometimes a regional A will be cheaper on eBay, but usually not. Usually uh, Pirate Ship you can depend on ranging from nine to 13 or so bucks in my experience. And it's hard to predict because it is regionally derived, that price, so the more zones it crosses on its way to the destination, the more expensive it will be. You can't predict it until someone buys it from you. But once more, let's say I did sell this for 25. Item cost was zero. Shipping cost was, let's say it's on the high end, 13. Still making eight bucks, 81 cents. I could price this at 40 and sit on it until winter and realize a little bit more return. But because I got it for free and because it's bulkier, this takes up more space in my inventory. I would like to move it more quickly. And when the season picks back up, it'll be one of the first to pop if people are looking for this specific item. I'm happy to turn zero dollars into 881 and not have to wait for it any longer than I really need to for an out of season item like this. There are a couple other circumstances. Uh, primarily, if I find something that's quite rare and valuable or something that doesn't have track record, like if it's a vintage shirt that just has a really weird pattern on it, or let's say I get like an Isaiah Napoli suit or like a, a cashmere Brioni jacket, that kind of higher dollar stuff I think there is a case to be made to price that aggressively on the high end because of a couple reasons. One, when you that stuff is rare and it does make sense in that circumstance, I think, to try to juice money out of it because if it's a difference of like two, 300 bucks, I am willing to sit on it for a little bit longer. Also because that kind of stuff, there's some weird buyer psychology that happens where something like the Brioni jacket, like 100% cashmere or Brioni jacket, if it's priced up, it recommends that item in the buyer's mind as being of higher quality than if it was priced lower. In fact, if you price too low, people's first instincts is to assume that it's counterfeit or there's something wrong with it. Like if I priced a Brioni cashmere jacket at 50 bucks, it would flip, but a lot of the buyers would probably second guess it. But if I priced it at 50 or sorry, 500 bucks, I would have to sit on it for a while, but there's a good chance I would get an offer for around 300 and sell it that way, which I think actually literally happened. I think I had a, a vintage Brioni blazer that I sold for like between two or 300 and it was priced at like five or something. Anyway, like the really top dollar stuff, it does kind of make sense to price on the higher end. 
And sometimes I just break these rules and price based on instinct, which is perfectly valid to do, especially after you have some experience. Like you, your mind accretes all of these variables and consolidates them into an instinct of what you are willing to price it at or what you think the market will support. Often those instincts are wrong. Often uh, you have to go back and double check the market on stuff that doesn't sell, price it down, price it accordingly. And then, you know, promoted listings do play a role. I'm mostly organic. Let me talk about different philosophies and start with the big criticisms of pricing low, like I tend to do with this stuff. The big, ar the big argument is that I'm racing to the bottom. This is this old saw. I've heard it a million billion times. It's uh, it doesn't carry water with me. I don't care. I don't think that it's a real argument. The argument is when you price too low you ruin the market for everybody and for yourself because you're contributing to this precedent or this process of this cascade of people lowering their prices aggressively and you, you undercut the value, the, the true value of a particular item. There is no such thing as inherent true value unless you're going by something like the labor theory of value, which fair enough, but that's not how stuff is priced on eBay or anywhere. What it's worth is what people are willing to pay for it. So it makes more sense to adapt to buyer behavior and, and buyer wants and needs. If people want a pair of OP board shorts for 15, I'm not going to contradict them and tell them that, oh, no, 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 these are worth 25. The market is always constantly in flux for every single commodity that we sell. And it is much smarter to adapt to the contours of that market as it changes and to give people what they want at the price that they're willing to pay versus sticking to your guns through some sense of pride or back padding of being a, a true responsible reseller and pricing your stuff higher than people want to pay you for it. It's just not smart to me because I wish it didn't work that way. I wish that there was some kind of government mandate that said that Robert Graham shirts will not sell for less than $40 ever, but it's just not how the world works. And I, I don't, I don't know what, the counter recommendation is it has to be something like price fixing right of we all just agree not to price lower than a certain point good luck but the the legit criticism is that you have to watch those thresholds because you can run the hamster wheel forever and not actually end up making adequate money to make it worth your time i'm happy to do the kind of junky flips the like 15 to 20 dollar flips for like relatively small profits because of my sourcing strategy and because I know that I can afford to do that with my cost of goods for a lot of the stuff, not all of it, not the stuff that I get at a retail thrift, but for a lot of it, I can still make adequate money for it to be worth my time. It may make sense for you to focus more on the sourcing end of sourcing a little bit better stuff so that for the same amount of listing labor, if you have like a set amount of listing that you can do, which we all do, but let's say you're only willing to list for like three hours a day or like 10 hours a week. If you have a part-time or a full-time job, this is like a part-time thing. You have other constraints, you have kids, whatever, like your time is limited. In that circumstance, yeah, like it may not be the wisest investment of your time to buy a pair of shorts for two bucks to turn into seven bucks. It probably makes more sense for you to spend a little bit more time hunting and pecking and finding something like the Viore t-shirt that you can list for more money. And of course, like, you can't just wave a magic wand and say, I'm gonna walk into a thrift store and find a bunch of higher dollar in demand items to source. The other end, like the other extreme, and I've made videos about this before, is the high ASP model, meaning you, you cherry pick the stuff that is really valuable, so the Brioni cashmere uh, jackets, and you slowly build a store of higher dollar items, and then when it does sell, you get a lot of return, and that compensates for a lower volume of sales. Uh, there are plenty of people that do this, Foremost in my mind is a guy named Rick, who has a channel called Thrift Fever. I've cited him a number of times. He does this kind of a business model. It's much more knowledge intensive. You have to have a bigger finger more directly on the pulse of the market to know what a specific buyer base really wants and to have a really cultivated eye for quality. But it is possible. So you can go the completely opposite way and just source a handful of things that are worth like 200 300 400 bucks put them up and then wait for the big fish to bite 
You could also just do all of the above or something in the middle of saying, I'm gonna get reasonably in demand items. I'm gonna price them at the median point and I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm gonna realize a little bit more return on it. They're not gonna be the quick flips, uh, but this makes more sense to me. Like for example, I'm gonna, whatever, I'm gonna get something like an Orvis shirt, like a vintage Orvis shirt that is selling for between like 20 and 50 bucks. I'm gonna price it at 35 or 40. I'm gonna sit on it for a little while and then I'm gonna wait for the right buyer to come along to give me what I want, even though the demand is low. The demand might be like 25, 30% sell through. All of the above is valid. All of the above is valid. I have just found over time that the pricing strategy of A, focusing on high demand items when they are available and B, pricing the lower demand items as low as I can get away with without losing the shirt off my back makes the most sense, is the most repeatable, and is the the style of reselling that I find the most gratifying and uh, most intelligent for me, my circumstances. Hope that makes sense. It is a little bit redundant with other videos that I've made. There is a video that goes into more detail on this called like two business models you might prefer to mine. It was, I think like a year old. Figure out what you want to do. Figure out what the buyers want. Find the middle of that Venn diagram that's satisfactory to you and to enough of your buyers and then price there. That's kind of my nutshell. Life lesson, ultimate wisdom, real ultimate power. Thanks for watching.